Greetings, KCS Build fans. Well, there's a box. A mystery box. And there's something in the box. And no, this is not a three-step process. Not that one, anyways. Anyways, so this is a mystery box. I ordered this on eBay. I paid way too much money for it. <laughs> Fortunately, I spent crypto money, so technically it was free, sort of. Um, so anyways, let's see what's in the box. Ooh, it says Azrock. And it's... A Tai Chi! It's a graphics card. Ooh, it's a 60 hitter. XT! Yay! Added bonus for me. So, reason why I got this. One, I kind of want to be able to try out ray tracing, um, but I don't want to go NVIDIA because I want a card that I can also mine with, and because NVIDIA is playing their LHR games and everything, that's just basically pointless. Um, for mine. So, I figured, why not spend way too much money on eBay uh, for a brand new 6800 XT. So, didn't get the 69. Um, there's not much of a performance difference between a 68 and a 69, especially um, at the price right now on eBay. And so, it's just, it's not worth it. So, but a 68, uh, it will give me a little better mining performance than the 5700 XTs that I'm using in the rack um, or in the rig um, that you'll probably see in the next video. Uh, right now, it's uh, pretty much fully assembled, um, except for the fact that um, the 6500 Ti5 processor that we used uh, looks like it died on us. <laughs> so. Uh, it'll power on, but it won't post. So, yeah. That's no fun. So I have a 6700T on the way uh, for that. So hopefully that gets here in, by the end of the week. So, anyways. Let's open the box and see what's in here. So, of course, in, in all Azrock fashion, we have the outer sleeve box. And then we have the box within the box. Set that over there for a moment. And in here we have our goodies. Usually it's got stickers and everything in here. So let's see. We've got Azark work done, door hanger, for uh, do not disturb. <laughs> on duty, do not disturb. <laughs> yeah, I have my own separate building, so I don't have to worry about that, because it's just me out here usually. <laughs> okay, uh, quick install guide. The, the magic coaster slash gear. I don't totally understand the concept for this, but whatever. And then your packet of stickers, which I never use, but cool. I know some people that love their stickers, so your thing, not my thing, but you know, to each their own. All right, so there's that. Then for the the great and great goody, we have a. Oh, Thai cheese are always really hard to get out. One big old monster graphics card. So this one is a about a two and a half slot thickness. And we'll get it out of the bag here. I have not even taken it out of the bag yet.
person I bought it from. Never took it out of the original packing tape. That's good. Okay. There it is. Okay. There it is. So, big difference between the 5700 XT Tai Chi and the 6800 XT Tai Chi is um, this is kind of a, hmm, what would you call that? Kind of a, like a, almost like a dark gunmetal gray on this instead of the silver aesthetic that they have on the um, 5700 XT Tai Chi. Uh, this has also got three uh, eight pin power connectors on it. Um, the Tai Chi only has two. Um, so, because these are supposed to be um, anywhere from about just under 300 to about 350 watts uh, of power. So, uh, two is probably Benefit, probably more than enough, but they probably have an extra one for all the extra stuff that's on the board on this. So, uh, of course, in, in typical um, Tai Chi fashion, we have our support bracket that actually runs through um, the back of the card. So that way, if you actually look at this, it's kind of like a big sandwich. So you have your PCB, and then you have a support bracket here and a support bracket here with the back plate that actually adds to the rigidity of the card so it doesn't sag on you. Um, as far as weight, um, in my hands, it just does not feel like it's too much, really that much heavier than the 5700 XT. Um, Size-wise, I'm looking at it right now, and I would say it's a hair longer, um, but not a whole lot. Um, thickness, it's basically the same as the 57. Um, the fans are slightly bigger. Uh, I believe these are, let's see, 120, and I believe this is like a 110 millimeter fan. On the 5700 XT, I believe it was a, um, a pair of 120s and like a 90 like a 93 millimeter fan that was in the middle. Um, so they've upgraded the middle fan. Um, the kind of gear saw design in the middle is basically the same as the 5700 XT Chai Chi. Um, the other is now, um, this did light up before on the 5700 XT. Um, however, this is now way bigger. I would say it's twice as big now. Uh, as far as this LED bar on, and everything on it. So, yeah. All in all, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, really good build quality. I would say, looks like we got full coverage. So similar to the 5700 XT uh, Tai Chi uh, heat sink design, looks like we've got um, a cold plate and it gives us full contact across all of our memory. Uh, inner processor on the first on the front side of the heatsink, and then it looks like we have um, thermal pads and um, contact on the second half of the heatsink with all the uh, the power inductors. So looks like that's how they got that set up. So should. Um, the one nice thing about the 5700 XTs um, in the Tai Chi in particular was the memory cooling. Um, the memory actually had really good cooling to it uh, with the heat sink design. So it looked like this is a very minor modification uh, to that same cooler design uh, that worked so well in, in the um, 5700 XT Tai Chi. And so uh, we should get the same uh, 
cooling potential. Uh, looks like on this one we've got one, two, three, we got six heat pipes. That's right, so this one. Oh, and then on the back here. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. So on the back here, you've got a three-prong pinout. I believe that is for an Elmore analog controller. So, um, which I do, which actually has the uh, the pins and everything for it. So, yeah, pretty cool. All right. So then, over here we've got our bio switch over here because this is dual uh, dual bios, just like the. Uh, 5700 was and is by default set to P BIOS which is your performance BIOS and Q BIOS which is your quiet BIOS and then you have your fan or not your fan but your LED switch over here uh, which is default set to on um, so yeah that is pretty much it teardown on this should be fairly simple actually um, so You've got this shroud um, actually attaches to the heatsink, and then so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws to take it off. Um, does look like on um, yep yeah, does look like you actually have to take out the you know take out the the screw fans on this yeah yeah so to take the shroud off you actually have to take the fans off or you have to um, undo the fans anyways uh, let's see. Your fan connectors are down here. This one is actually the LED. Uh, um, it's actually this LED here. Uh, yeah, it's both actually. And then this is your fan header right here. So it's actually daisy chained split through here, uh, through this side right here. So to be able to change your fans, you'll have to take the shroud off anyways, but you'll have to undo your fans before you can actually take off the shroud. So it's kind of set up so it comes off in one piece, sort of. So, okay. All right, so this is going to go in the dark fleet. Currently in the dark fleet, we've got a, um, I temporarily have a, Oh, what is that? It is a HD 7980 card, uh, gigabyte card that's in there. Um, you might have seen it in the past because it used to be in the Threadripper server. Um, so it's currently in there right now because the uh, Tai Chi's and everything that I've been using, um, that I did have in that box, um, those are all in the mining rig now. So. This is the new car that actually go in my personal rig, so which I do all the the business work on and everything else. So, all right. So let's get it to the bench and uh, get her fired up. Okay, so here we are at the bench. You can see it from what you can see. It's a little bit of a mess as of late. I'm in the process of trying to get it cleaned off. So, anyways, all right. So we got the. Um, tempered glass taken off the case here so we're gonna go ahead and remove our little cover panel our slot cover panel um, on this particular case now this is a dark fleet Antec dark fleet uh, 500 RGB um, if you got oversized video cards it's easier to take this out um, to get them in it gives you just a little bit more room to be able to slide that I.O. cover on there so you're not um, chipping at your motherboard or anything like that. So, alright, we're going to go ahead and unscrew or 
take the power connector out of this guy here. Okay. Take our tension screws out. And then hit our release. And wiggle, wiggle, and out it comes. Yeah, so this is an old, yeah, it's an R7850C uh, gigabyte uh, two gig card. Uh, works great for just a display output test card. Um, you know, you can do a little bit of gaming on it. Uh, they don't mind worth the garbage, so <laughs> don't even try it. Uh, an old 7000 series HD card, don't don't even try to mine on it. it it's not even worth it. <laughs> You're talking like pennies a day, so it's like not even worth it. Okay, so grab our card here. Now you can kind of see I've got these two slots punched out here. Um, the reason for that was because I was um, I had two of the RX 5As uh, loaded up in here uh, for when I was doing when I was mining with it. Um, so the one thing I figured out with this particular case, um, even with the big uh, P14. Um, exhaust fans and everything going on in the push-pull on the 360 radiator is uh, if you put two video cards in this particular case it doesn't really have a lot of room to breathe and so um, your top card will run really hot so but I'm gonna go ahead and stick these guys in here because they'll Cover up the slots for us. see we've got it goes on the back side so we've got one two and three so we'll move these guys over here like so now the uh, this card is just a little bit longer um, I don't, the PCB is not really any longer. It's the shroud. This shroud sticks out just a hair more than the 5700 XT Tai Chi. So, it should fit. Getting it in here is going to be a little snug, though. So, because it won't, because of the way this is built, I can't just drop it straight down. So I'm going to have to turn it this way, wiggle it around, bring it out, make sure it's in the slot, and click, and we're in. Voila. Myself, on a big card like this, I always like to go from the middle, do the middle hole first, because the top hole is usually horseshoe shaped like this. So if you put this one in first, um, it's not going to hold the card up at all, uh, especially if you're putting this in uh, with the machine standing up. So yeah, it's not going to make your life any easier. 
Now, where this card is very heavy, gotta make sure this is nice and snug here, otherwise it's gonna try to droop on us really bad. So, okay, all right, so, and then we've got one, two, and three. So we're gonna take these guys. Now I have a thermal take. Um, if you were gonna run this particular card, I would recommend uh, go to Cable Mod or something and get the um, the cables that match your modular power supply uh, for this, just because that um, these the cables that come with this particular thermal take power supply. Um, are really stiff and rigid and so they just don't like to let you move anything around very easily so okay there's one and I'm gonna take a a tip from Jay's Two Cents, and he always says, make sure you run your if you're running a big video card, run dedicated power connectors. Uh, don't run the daisy chains um, because sometimes you can pull too much current especially on something like this because you don't know how much current each plug is going to pull because on most cards it doesn't pull it evenly all the way across the plugs so you could have one plug that's pulling 250 watts and the other two could only be pulling like 50 watts piece so And that is the issue you constantly run into with like 3090s, for example, because they have the same um, triple eight pin connector on them on the, um, not on the um, FE cards, but on like the Strix and some of those. But, uh, because of that, um, if you run, you can, that card in particular, if it's overclocked, can pull enough juice, it'll actually melt these wires, uh, if you've got it daisy chained. So. Okay. So then, for now, we're just gonna kind of tuck these underneath our... hoses and try to kind of smush them down here a little bit so they're not totally all over the place but that's why if you had a triple if you have a card like this um, I would recommend uh, going to like cable mod or somebody and getting or even a Corsair um, makes the sleeved cables um this will just look a whole lot neater um than this does this this kind of looks a little ratty so but that's it all right so we're gonna take the the fancy stuff off here real quick light off here real quick and we'll just give it a quick test plug in ooh look at that a little 
looks like a unicorn took a giant poop of Skittles. All right. <laughs> All right. The fans have been up. It lights up and everything. So awesome. Looks like it's good. And we're at a 98 on our postcode. So we're going to shut it off here before it fully boots up. And all right, we'll put the glass back on it, fire it up, and we'll do some tests and see what we get. All right, so as you can see here, we got our 3D Mark open here. So we're going to run some tests on this and see what we got going on. So we've got our overlay up here, and this is just the standard uh, Radeon overlay. Um, so, and then we're going to be using. Uh, for overclocking, we're going to be using the um, Azeroth uh, Tweaker software uh, that I've already had installed on here. So right now it's just set the default. So we're going to make a default run and see what we get on this. So, All right. So, oh, and then we also have our uh, 3700X um, all-core OC locked at uh 4.4 gigahertz so uh, that's about the uh, perfect stable for about any workload um with this particular chip and this particular cooler so all right well let's give it a shot and see what happens here and no we don't need demo So, from memory, we can already see that we've got a significant improvement over our 5700 XT on the same system. So, just upgrading our video card, uh, we've got about a 40 FPS average improvement. Um, I know that I could get about, um, about 60 to the mid-60s uh, before on this test. For FPS uh, and this is just and that was overclocked this we're just running default uh, we've got a GPU clock of 2234 seems to be about the top end right now max that I could do on the 5700 XT that I had was uh, 2105 for GPU clock and that one and then I could run the the memory at uh, 1800 and that was totally stable for synth synthetic bench testing gaming it would depend on the game but usually uh, 20 uh, 2070 megahertz uh, for the um, GPU clock and then for the memory clock was still 1800 so let's see so far all right so we're getting to the more difficult part of everything and we're running solidly pretty solidly over 100 FPS I know through this particular section, the 5700 XT would normally get uh, right around the uh, about 50 to high 50, high 50s in FPS. I would say so far right here I would say we're probably going to crack 10 gram pretty easily I would say
Oh, yeah. 15 to 15. That's way better. Um, 10,000. Um, 357 on CPU score and 16... 589. My highest score on uh, with the 5700 XT is uh, combined score is just shy of 11,000. 11, uh, and that was in winter and I got the office really, really cold <laughs> to be able to do that. So, okay. Oh, that's not what I wanted. All right, so that's Time Spy. Okay, so in this video, we're getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm going to go ahead and round it up right now. So you can see on our 5700 XT OC results, and then these were the, ma the highest scores we were ever able to achieve on that card on this system. So these go back to as early as November um, of 2020. So these are um, the highest scores we've ever been able to achieve on this particular box. Um, so you can see our 6800 XT in Fire Strike and in Time Spy um, have significant improvements. Uh, Night Raid is our outlier uh, for whatever reason. Um, I think it's because basically in the default uh, you don't get the boosting capability and the clock speed. Um, on the GPU that um, you do once you apply just a little more voltage to the chip. Um, seems like the die on these uh, on these GPUs really craves voltage. Um, it would really be interesting to see if you ha if uh, Radeon would let us adjust the power slider further um, to where we could actually jam more voltage uh, into the chip, even air-cooled, because even on our full OC on our 6800 XT, um, we were not even uh, barely hitting 90 degrees C and on our junction temperatures and for um, Radeon on um, these uh, you can easily go all the way up to about 105 um, So I mean there is lots of headroom <laughs> That you could really get into the other thing is too is the fans on this particular card um, are even at our maximum fan speed um, that we were able that it actually ramped up to was just a little over 1700 rpm uh I believe these fans will max out at somewhere around uh 2000 rpm so we still had headroom there um yeah it'd be really interesting to see how far you could really push the one of these cards um if the radeon group at amd would just let us push that power power slider a little further and really dump some voltage into the thing um it's because it seems like these chips really crave voltage so but anyways with the oc applied uh we saw a very solid about 10 percent improvement um which is actually about normal with a, a manual oc implemented even and not shown here but we also saw that if you just do a like an auto OC, um, you will pretty much instantly gain at least five five percent. And some of w the micro stuttering and everything that sometimes we see uh, in the benchmarks completely goes away with just a little bit more voltage dumped into the uh, the GPU. So. Yeah, it's a very interesting chip. I just wish we had more headroom to really be able to see the upper limit of what this thing will actually do. Um, as far as mining, I, I didn't put it in here, but this card does get a very consistent, um, about 62 mega hash per second. Um, 
where a 5700 XT, uh, if you're mining on that, um, about any 5700 XT will get you about 48 to about 53 um, mega hash per second. So in all reality, if you say you had a 5700 XT and you thought, oh, I want to go to a 6800 XT, um, the mine on, it's not really worth it. You're not gonna, you're not gaining enough at the cost of the card um, to really be able to justify it. Uh, your 5700 XT is probably still the best bang for your buck uh, right now, other than a Radeon 7. Um, and the Radeon 7s, unfortunately, are getting rarer and rarer to get, um, even on the used market, and there's a lot of ones that are burnt out out there uh, on those cards. So, yeah, um, if you're going on the Radeon side, um, 5700 XT for mining is a is about your sweet spot still in all reality so but that's it um like share subscribe um especially leave some comments below and tell me what you thought of this one um i know a lot of the other youtubers are kind of uh, steering away from this kind of content just because of the fact that nobody seems to really be interested in it right now because unless you've got a bunch of spare change laying around um, these cards are really out of grasp for most people, and I understand that, but for me, as someone who, one, does like the game, and two, um, will use this card in the system for production work, um, for me, it was, it, it was one of those things, it was like, eh, I might as well, uh, because the 5700 XT that I had in here, um, ended up going in the mining rig so um for me it was kind of a win-win um but if you were going to buy this card um i would recommend it for for gaming i would say it's a pretty good deal uh if you're a pretty hardcore gamer um this is this is a pretty solid a solid buy um i would say um so yeah, I would definitely recommend this card for gaming. If you uh, are mining, it's not such a good deal, honestly. Um, it's efficient, yes, as far as power consumption, but for the price right now, until the price comes down on these, it's not really worth it. The only, the only real advantage to these cards is even when the fans ramp up, they are super quiet. Um, they don't they don't get super loud uh, like the 5700 XT does or even the Radeon 7s do because the fan diameter is so much bigger. So that that is the one advantage is they are a lot quieter. Um, this machine, when I was doing the overclock testing on this, it was deathly quiet. I mean, you could you couldn't really hear it run. I could actually hear the coil whine over the fans because the fans were just that quiet. Um, so, and the coil whine on this card is extremely subtle. Uh, you really have to be kind of in a quiet room to actually be able to hear it. So, um, but anyways, that's it. Again, like, share, subscribe, uh, let us know what you think, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.